Hey everybody, uh, this is a quick look at the Kingpin Hydrocopper uh, 3090. I received this yesterday. Uh, I was notified by the queue um, two days ago. I put myself on notification the day it came out for the queue, so I don't know how long that was. I don't, frankly don't remember, nor do I remember what place I was online. All right, but immediately you notice the package is much smaller than the AIO version. Uh, it's a little bit disappointing. Uh, this card is 22,250 USD. Um, for that pricing, I expect better packaging than this. Okay. This is kind of like the same box packaging they use for their RMA cards now or the Black Edition. Um, the For the Win 3 box is actually nicer. Okay. Uh, but enough about the box. Okay. But I feel given the current tariffs and so forth and the overall cost of this card, a little better, right? A little better. Yeah. So uh, I've opened this before. So there's this plastic bag, you know, anti-static that I removed. But pretty much you get the card itself with the block on it. And you get another small box, which I have no idea what's in here. Looks like to me, it's probably some display port adapter. Uh, Okay, you get an Allen wrench for the fittings. You get an EVGA badge. What else? That's what you get in the box. Uh, let's take a look at the block itself. Um, right away, I can tell you when I looked at this yesterday, this cover was plastic on the AL version. It is now aluminum, metalish, same material as the back plate. Um, if I peel this, it's probably be easier to see. This aluminum, so, you know, it's like plastic the aluminum, but I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. Yep. So pretty much same back plate as the uh, AIO version. I swear it's thicker than the AIO one I had, um, but I don't remember and I no longer have it because to be honest, it sucked. Uh, that one was just a garbage die, all right? So granted, it probably would have been amazing on sub ambient. I'm more of a chilled water guy and a normal water cooling guy. So for me, I had to wait for a block for it to come out, which still hasn't come out outside of this one. And, uh, you know, just, and it wasn't a great, die to begin with compared to like the three or three or five switches I had at the time and the one Supreme, it just wasn't worth it. But anyway, uh, you get the screen, uh, just like with the IO from what I can tell PCB is identical. You get the ports and looking inside here, if I can, I'm just get rid of all the plastic, it's freaking annoying. Um, but if you look here, uh, the fin array looks pretty darn impressive. Now online, they say that uh, you're getting about a 10C Delta. What 10C Delta means is it will run 10 degrees warmer than your water temperature. So if your water temperature under load is 35, the card should not go past 45. We'll see how true that is. Um, but yeah, now I'm gonna get into a rig. I'll plug it up and let's see how it does. Okay, so I have the GPU in the loop right now. Um, it's just a simple 360. It's kind of hard to see in there, but it's a simple 360 uh, thin radiator with an 11700K on a Z590 Hero. Um, I'm not gonna, this radiator is not enough to handle the load from this GPU and that CPU. Okay, so I can tell you right now, if I run both with the load, the temps are gonna be horrific. Um, well, not horrific, but not ideal. Uh, since the 11700K is extremely power hungry. All right. Um, so right now the card is idling at um, 36 degrees. Our water temperature sensors is reading 33 degrees. So that's three above water temperature. That's pretty normal. So uh, while combustor is not gonna give us an idea of max clock, since it's not the best tool to overclock your GPU, it will pretty much give it 100% power Right. So at 120% max TDP on the 
LN2, quote unquote LN2 BIOS, which I believe pulls 440 watts, 450 watts, I think, something like that. Um, you can see that the temperature shoots up to 53 almost immediately. Uh, temperature sensor still hasn't caught up yet because water takes a while to heat up, right? But um, the delta so far looks to be about 20 degrees and I think combustor might actually crash. Yeah, the combustor crashed. So this is a little too much. We'll dial it down 10 megahertz. Obviously your max overclock is going to be better outside of combustor, but I mean, without messing with any of the dip switches and just the card using sliders as is right now, uh, 2055, temperature 55. Yeah, pretty much. It's not the 10C Delta that I've seen people post about. Um, if you think that I have more radiators, they would probably do better, maybe by a degree, but I doubt it since as you can tell, the water temperature has only gone up three degrees, All right? So the water temperature going up a lot and then the GPU is going up a lot, then it would be radiator space. But since the idle and load water temperature is only four degrees, it's not so much radiator space. Okay, so the block is, not amazing of a block, okay? So the 10C might be with the power set to normal, right? So let's try that and stop this. And then we will slide the power down to right around 100. And we will set this back down to zero. So not overclock, everything's zero. So then we'll run it again. And our GPU temperatures are relatively the same, down two degrees so far, All right? Water temperature is climbing now to 38. So the Delta is getting a little better, but uh, I ran this car a little longer. So I know it goes up to like 56 degrees and the Delta is about 15 degrees um, after extended period of time. Maybe in a larger loop, it'll be a little better, but not by much. So it's not as amazing as like the Optimus blocks are, All right? Uh, that's to be expected you know it looks good but it's not that good so um with that said uh i think without messing with too much of the switches i can run a benchmark around 21 2135 something like that but i would say gaming stable you're probably looking at 2080 which without messing with any of the switches or any tools it falls in line with anything like a Florida Win 3, like a good one, or a good Strix, with pretty much the engine same clock speeds. Just to pretty much wrap it up, the block is decent, not amazing. Um, same performance as you would get from like EK block or something like that. I've heard the heat killer blocks are pretty good on the 3080s, even the uh, higher overclock, quote unquote, higher wattage models. Um, but with that said, this is a decent variant. Decent bin, you know, nothing amazing, but it is what it is. Uh, the card really, I can't know if you can really see it on camera here, but I'll try to zoom in. Uh, the card really has no RGB. It just has the screen and the Kingpin logo that lights up RGB. Uh, I know the loop is really ugly, but it's just a basic thing. So it's a very dark black out look. So if you like that aesthetic, and if you're on the queue for this, I mean, right now, 3090 at $2,500 is a steal, right? I mean, this is 2250 taxed out in Europe, it's 2500 That's a steal these days for a 3090, so if you can get one, why not? Um, but yeah, nothing special about the card in particular, other than, you know, I guess the screen's kind of nice, but the same could be said for the IO one, uh, which also, if you can get it, why not? Um, yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up.